and waiting for the great kickoff. No sign of nerves here. And it's a go. My word, does victory taste good. And now a chance for Keegan. And that's it. Arsenal bring back a second double to Highbury. Can Newcastle claim their first FA Cup since 1955? experience what Chelsea felt last year, the unique joy of winning the oldest and most romantic competition in football. The 1998 final, two six-time winners, two giants of FA Cup history. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to a very, very warm Wembley. It's a great privilege and pleasure for us on ITV to bring you today's final. And I'm really delighted to begin by welcoming a very special new member onto our team, Rude Hullett. Thank last year's much. winning manager with Chelsea. Uh, you're very welcome, Rude. Today's pre-match headlines are all about your fellow countryman, Dennis Bergkamp. Now, yeah. how decisive do you think that might be? I think he's very important only to be present on the pitch uh, as for the spectators, but also for, uh, for Arsenal itself. Uh, I think also the opposition uh, take notice of him being on the pitch. So I, th I think it's a big loss for football in general, but uh, of course more for Arsenal. What about his own personal disappointment? How do you see that, knowing, de I, knowing yeah, Dennis? That would be terrible. I think he'd he done everything he could to be fit today. And uh, he knows also from me and of course also from the other Chelsea players, because we're all living in London, what it is to be here. As a, as a foreigner, you can't understand what it is to be on Wembley and how the English live to it, you know. And the occasion. Yeah, you can't understand it. You only understand it when you have done it and when you have been there. And I know what the feeling is now, but, you know, I, uh, I hope he will get a, a second chance. Yeah. OK, well, we're going to take a, an early uh, look at the team lineups uh, right now. Remember, this is unconfirmed, but Ian Wright is likely to start on the subs bench. Christopher Ray replacing Dennis Bergkamp. Ray, of course, who scored the semi-final winner against Wolves. And as for Newcastle, it's unlikely Keith Gillespie has recovered from injury. And it seems that uh, Steve Watson will get the nod over Warren Barton in defence. Well, we'll have uh, more from Rude in a moment, but let's uh, look ahead to what we have in store this afternoon. Well... The famous tunnel, that's it, from where the players will emerge at about 10 to 3. But before then, we'll have plenty to entertain you with action, features, interviews, and of course, the unique Wembley atmosphere. First, we'll be getting reports from both team hotels and how Arsenal will cope without this man, Dennis Bergkamp. Then it's nostalgia time as Charlie George and his teammates relive the Arsenal double of just a few years ago, it seems like yesterday. At 12.20, the first instalment of action from this year's FA Cup story. At 12.45, we focus on Newcastle, where they remain united despite a tough season. At 5 past 1, Barry Venison profiles Kenny Dalgleish, a man of few words, but many contradictions. 
And we'll also hear why the Arsenal manager was and is a revelation to England coach Glenn Hoddle. About quarter to two, we shall see and hear from the players as they get the first feel of the Wembley turf this afternoon. Then a fascinating insight as Rude Hullet assesses the Dutch influence that does still remain in the Arsenal team. The view from the top at five past two, Tony Blair picks his all-time favourite Newcastle team. And Kevin Keegan explains why Alan Shearer is worth every penny of the £15 million that took him to Newcastle. At 2.20, we'll be looking at the teams in detail. Our guide to the Gunners is Ian Wright. And John Barnes will be giving away one or two of Newcastle's dressing room secrets. And throughout the afternoon, we'll be enjoying all the traditional Wembley sights and sounds, including Abide With Me, Tony Hadley will lead the singing there, and the presentation of the teams to their Royal Highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Kent. Well, as well as uh, Rude Hullet, I'll be joined by Terry Venables and Glenn Hoddle here in the studio. And Ron Atkinson, well, he'll be with Brian Moore in the commentary box. Brian there already. So that's our lineup. You'll also be getting a chance to win the big prize in our FA Cup Goal of the Season competition. For the winner, £1,000 in cash. Let's begin, though, by hearing how the latest preparations have been going for both clubs. Arsenal first. Our reporter at the Team Hotel in Chelsea Harbour is Gary Newborn. Well, it's all rather quiet here at Arsenal's Team Hotel in Chelsea Harbour. The players have already finished their pre-match meal. It was a choice of boiled food, mashed potatoes, rice and pasta all washed down with water. They've done their famous stretch routine, they've been for a short walk and now they're settling down to listen to their manager tell them the team lineup. I believe that the semi-final hero, Christopher Ray, will start in place of their injured star striker. Now after missing the Premiership finale, Dennis Bergkamp must turn his back on Wembley too. Friday morning's misery at the training ground. A sharp contrast to the optimism the Dutchman had expressed the night before when receiving the Football Writers' Player of the Year award. Well, it's, it's better than 50% at the moment. Uh, I still need to do a, a very good test uh, tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, then we're going to decide uh, Saturday morning. But no Saturday decision. The Burkamp crisis, the first thing to go wrong in a week when Arsene Wenger seemed to have got everything else so right. It began in relaxed style. A round or two of golf for some. A variety of handicaps making it all a bit of a hit and miss affair. But Ray Parler wasn't the only one struggling with accuracy. I'm playing off scratch, by the way. <laughs> Meanwhile, a jacket and tie job for the man who outsmarted Alex Ferguson to win the Premiership. Arsene Wenger, named Manager of the Year, the first foreigner to win this award, and a good chance to practice his trophy-holding pose ahead of Saturday. By Thursday, touchline space was at a premium. The camera lens is straining to see if Burkamp was too. And while the player his teammates call the Messiah wasn't walking on water, he showed no sign of the hamstring injury that had kept everyone guessing. So the spirits were high back at the team hotel as the players were paraded for the media one final time. Hello. Hello. Don't make predictions. Moi je souhaite que la France fasse une belle Coupe du Monde. Can't do that on TV. <laughs> Can't tell you it's a secret. You have a Dutch girlfriend. Dutch girlfriend? Yeah. Me? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Where? The laughing's over, the serious stuff to come. The players' minds now focused on Wembley and winning for Dennis. OK, that's Arsenal. What about Newcastle? Our reporter with the Magpies, Clive Tilsley. Tense, nervous, headaches. What you need is a cup final. All of a sudden, the Newcastle players are new men. 
having manoeuvred their way nervously out of the relegation trap, they seem to have found another gear. There was one cloud hanging over them, the English summer. The final pre-Wembley training session took place in a thunderstorm. Keith Gillespie was confined to the supervision of physiotherapist Derek Wright. The winger's ankle injury means this won't be his year. Darren Peacock is another non-starter, so with Andreas Anderson set to get the nod to partner Alan Shearer, Kenny Dalglish's main dilemma is in defence. It looks like two from three between Steve Howey, Steve Watson and Warren Barton. But you never know with Kenny. Shearer had a turn in goal. There'll probably be at least one surprise somewhere. 30,000 or more fans are on their way south, all suitably prepared. Amongst them, the club's number one fan. Sir John Hall reluctantly returned to the helm seven weeks ago at the height of a scandal which rocked the Newcastle boat, but didn't sink it. As a fan, I am a fan, you know. I've been a fan since I was eight. And uh, I want to see them win, I want to see them score. But I'm more than I want to see a great day. I want to see the club do well. It's a world stage, it's going to a world audience. And I want everyone to say it's a great club, Newcastle United. This must be one of the most famous cup final hotels of them all. It was here that the England team completed their preparations for the 1966 World Cup final. When the Newcastle United team coach comes under this archway in just under an hour's time, there'll be 21 players sitting on it, and none of them will know for sure whether or not they're playing this afternoon. Kenny Dalglish will read them his team sheet in the privacy of the Wembley dressing room at around about 1.45. Just now, he's the only man in that hotel who knows the 11 names that will be on it. So that's the latest news. These are the latest scenes at Wembley. And as always, the fans are already making it a day to remember. Some have been around all night, I might tell you. Many have been here all morning, but the colour and the banter and the fun, they're all part of this most special of days in the football calendar. It's a 1998 FA Cup final, Arsenal against Newcastle United. And in the next part, a really tough moment for Rude Hullett. Sorry, Rude, but it's that sensational cup action from Stamford Bridge back in January. That's coming up. Do you know how many times we've hit the woodwork this season? I'm not interested. It's good to know you can see Bobby's on the beat. Or we'll take a quiet drive through the countryside. In a land where an Englishman's home is his castle, we can still find the odd thatched roof. And in London, you can see a pearly queen or two. It's good to know things haven't changed a bit. Where were you last Friday? Friday? I've told you. Flying on Concorde. It was fantastic. Book any economy summer flight on British Airways now and you could win a special flight on Concorde. It's an unbelievable offer. We got all night, Ian. Ever get the feeling you've lived before? I know I have. I've been a Dublin bricklayer. Dublin bricklayer. I've been a Yorkshire coal miner. A Yorkshire coal miner. And I've been a Bombay curry taster. Bombay curry taster. That's why today there's a stout drinker, a bitter drinker, and a lager drinker in me. It's creamy, it's smooth, it's refreshing. It's called a Calder's. Where have you been all my lives?
in the land of the pharaohs. I wish, I wish I was in Egypt. See your travel agent and pick up a Hazen Jarvis, Thompson's, Bales, Keone, or Thomas Cook brochure, or phone 0870 1234 321. The Rover 200, from £9,700, with one year's free insurance. I'm not in if it's for me. Welcome back to Wembley as we anticipate the climb up to the Royal Box for the presentations that will come, of course, after the match. If you're first up, you've lost and you must be shattered. But for the winning team, it's 39 steps of absolute jubilation. And this is what you get if you're lucky enough to win. It's something uh, for every player to cherish at the end of their career. But the Arsenal boys today have the chance to make it even more special because the sixth league and cup double of the modern era are up for grabs. This report now from Gabriel Clark. They've always tried to do things the right way. They've always been the flagship for other clubs to copy. I think Arsenal tries to set the standards that others follow. I think it's style. You stick to them somehow. They're sort of getting tangled in your blood in some way. It's very hard to describe. There's just something about the club, you know, the stadium, everything. It's. Uh, there's an aura about it. Herbert Chapman underpins everything Arsenal. A brilliant manager in the 30s, Chapman instigated the building of a classic Art Deco stadium. His vision inspired the whole Marble Hall culture. Arsenal became the envied establishment club, and 40 years later, the double team would jealously guard that heritage. It was everything about it. We, we had to wear our club suits. If we travelled, we always travelled first class. Uh, we were brought up to understand the traditions that, that Chapman had brought in in the 30s. I started off going to the clock end, and as I got a bit older, 12, 13, I sort of uh, jumped over the pitch and went up to the North Bank, and uh, the crowd used to sway. I just sort of went on from there, and when I was 15, you know, I was asked to come and sign as an apprentice, and uh, I couldn't get here quick enough. Charlie, look at you. Look at Charlie, I want to hear this. There he is now. That's an electric shot. It's better than you told him to come in early. <laughs> I was always early. <laughs> we were mates. I mean, we were mates off the field. And, uh, and then again, in those days, we had to live within a certain radius of the ground. We couldn't live south of London. So we, we used to bump into each other doing shopping. You know, we'd go to the pub for a couple of beers after the game. We were, we were great mates. And I think that showed on the park as well. I thought we were a great side and I thought we were very, very underestimated and I think managers and coaches realised how good we were. Arsenal took 23 points from their final 26, dramatically clinching the championship behind enemy lines at Tottenham. Manager Bertie Mee urged them on in the pursuit of history, but their 65th and final game of an epic season would go all the way to an excruciating period of extra time. What Liverpool got? <laughs> The tape's nearly worn out. I've had to live with the Liverpool goal. Still highway, dangerous indeed! Oh, goal! Oh, that's the goal! It was such a bad error, really. And I could have been the guy who cost Arsenal the double. Charles Graham, just slide, for your information, was that far away from the goal that he claimed he scored in the cup <laughs> final. <laughs> Oh, Charlie George, who can hit him? Oh, a great goal! Charlie George! If you're scoring a winning goal in a cup final, no matter how old or how big, that's the best feeling in the world. It's probably better than sex for about 30 seconds. He was a massive supporter of Arsenal when he was a kid. He still goes to every game that Arsenal play. Even for him, it must have been a bigger dream than for the likes of the rest of the team, because that was his club. Where did they finish in a chart at one from? Six. Was it? Is that? Six. Couldn't remember getting much money from it. We'd never get it. <laughs> you made history, you guys. Deep down, do you really, really want them to win on Saturday? 
You're brought up to be very competitive, you know, and you don't like to give anything away. But I've now come round to the opinion that if they do it, good luck to them and they deserve it. You can only be the best of your time, and I think for me, and I know everyone who's playing the doors, I would love it to happen. Irrespective of what other people think, we want it to happen. That's Arsenal, what a player he was, I can tell you as well. Now, we've just got some news through. There's been a little bit of a hiccup at the Newcastle Hotel. Would you believe that the coach there, which is going to bear them to Wembley, has a flat battery, it will not start the coach, and uh, I just hope they can get off to a garage fairly quickly. Otherwise, uh, well, I can't believe that we'd have a delay or not. That's unbelievable, isn't it, Rude? I think because of Betty, you know, I saw him driving the bus. I think he'd done something... Uh... <laughs> uh, you're very observant, you are. Um, those, those pictures we saw of the, of the double there, I mean, for, for our team, it was way back, it was 27 years ago. Um, the consistency that you need to do that, Rude? It's, it's very hard. I've done it also once in Holland with uh, Feyenoord. And um, I think it depends also a little bit of the program you have. How many, you know, how many weeks before the end, you know, before you have that cup final, you are already champion. Because then you can, you know, reload the battery. If you are all the time working for both of them, and maybe also European Cup... Which uh, Arsenal had, Rude, didn't they? Because yeah. they won it with two matches to spare. Yeah, so then... Uh, uh, the it, current side. Yeah, so some, some people can rest, and uh, that, you know, then they can uh, load up the battery again, and then uh, they will perform on, yeah. on the end of the season. Yeah. Uh, just very briefly, you were the first overseas manager to, to win here at Wembley in the Cup yeah. final. Arsene Wenger has a chance to repeat what you did and do the double. Oh yeah, it would be great. It would be uh, great for Arsenal. I think um, everybody was always worried in London that everybody was winning it up north, and now all of a sudden the, the teams uh, in the south doing well. I think that is also part of it. But uh, it's, it, it was already great for me um, that uh, that I won it, and I think for Wenger it will be even more. Yeah. OK, thanks, Rude. Well, now let's uh, pop over to the ITV celebrity uh, balcony to get the sports presenter of the year. That's Jim Rosenthal. That's what he received from the Royal Television Society on Thursday. We were all absolutely delighted for him. Jim. Just to keep 